Hello, welcome to Old Carson City. My name is Mary Lees and I'm Hammy Gardenia. Today we have the pleasure of interviewing Richard Stokes, our Car Carson School District Superintendent. Mr. Stokes, thank you for joining us today. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, first, thank you. I appreciate this opportunity to meet you and to participate in this activity. And glad to tell you a little bit about uh, who I am and what I do for a living. Um, I grew up in a small town in Idaho and uh, come from a rural farming background, so agriculture was important where I grew up. Uh, my family raised cattle and um, grew potatoes. I guess that's what you do in Idaho. Uh, I went to school. I went to uh, my formative years uh, in the school district in Salmon. And then I attended the university uh, in Pocatello. It's called Idaho State University. I went on to get my graduate degree at the University of Wyoming, which is in Laramie. And I've been working here in Carson City for the last 15 years. I was first affiliated with the um, with the Human Resources Department, and about eight years ago, I was promoted to be the superintendent. What kind of education did you maintain to become a superintendent? Well, um, in order to be a superintendent, you have to have a graduate degree, which means some level of uh, university training past a bachelor's degree. And, and students usually get a bachelor's degree in about four years. And so a master's degree is typically about two years after your bachelor's degree. And then if you go on to get a, a PhD or an EDD, uh, that's usually about another two or three years. So there's, there's a lot of work that's involved in getting an education, but it's all doable. Um, just like where you go from maybe the 10th grade to the 11th grade, the information that you get in 10th grade is helping to prepare you for the information you get in 11th grade. So college is pretty much like that. You take coursework that builds upon coursework, and so they're assuming, they being the professors, that the information that you're getting in these classes are, is cumulative. And then as you grow and uh, work toward that diploma or that certificate, they feel like then at that point you've got at least the theory to go out and to get a job in your field of study. And of course, it's really helpful once you have that degree to get practical experience, which is going to work for a school district and learning how to work with people, learning how the laws of education work within every uh, community that you live in. And then the individual school district will have its own set of regulations. And uh, you know, what I could say to both of you is that the, the credential is important but learning really how to get along with people and how to be friendly and how to uh, be cooperative is really important too. So it's not just going to college, I think, that makes um, people good employee employers or also uh, people who can uh, help coach Little League and help, uh, help do all those things that a community needs to have. So there's lots of ways that young people can contribute. But that education is pretty key. That's kind of the basic stuff that you got to have. And so it's almost like the character of the person. Helps a tremendous uh, amount for a person to have good character. I think that's a, an excellent way to say it. That's great. <clears throat> what are some job duties that, to become a superintendent that you do right now? OK. Well, my bosses are the school board. And the school board are members of our community that have been elected to that position. And so they will have a set of uh, philosophies and expectations uh, and rules and regulations and policies. And my job is to help them carry out their, their philosophy, their expectations. So my job is to administer the, uh, the expectations of the school board. And so where that school board exists really to make sure that students have all of the activities and the resources and the materials and the teachers, all the personnel that it takes to run a school, uh, it's my job to oversee them so that they can support you in your school day. Now whether or not that's the lady who gives you your hot lunch at school or whether or not that's the librarian or your favorite teacher uh, or the person that drives the bus or helps 
clean the buildings, all of those people really are under my supervision. Now obviously that's a big job in a school district, school district like Carson City, so I, I can't physically do that. So we've established a structure of other supervisors to help me do that work. Interesting. Yeah. How many, how many schools do you oversee? So there are 10 schools in our school district. And um, we have two high schools. One's Carson High, the other is an alternative school called Pioneer High School. We have two middle schools, and so almost all of our students either go to Carson Middle or to Eagle Valley Middle School. And then we have six elementary schools. What is the best aspect about your job? What I really enjoy is working with students. When I first moved from being a teacher to being a principal and then a, an administrator here at the district level, um, I didn't have the day-to-day -day interaction with students that I had when I was a teacher. And that was one of the really fun parts. That was one of the things that I really enjoyed as a teacher. I knew as an administrator I'd have the ability to influence more lives, but yet I've always missed the, um, the part of being an administrator that took me away from students. And so uh, when I have an opportunity, I like to sit down with students like you. We get a chance to visit. I get to see you uh, learn and grow and try new things. I enjoy going to the activities at the different schools. It's great fun for me to go and, and listen to the fifth grade band play and watch them then as they progress and uh, then go to a high school concert and hear, you know, hey, those students have picked up all of those skills in my school district. And so that, that's really fun. I enjoy going to watch basketball games or wrestling matches. I love going to band concerts, uh, speech and debate concert or, uh, uh, contests. Um, it's just fun. I mean, there, there's such a wide variety of options for students. And uh, watching you guys grow and develop, and uh, I'm hoping at some point one of you will come and take my job, <laughs> and, uh, and I'll be able to retire. So knowing that we are doing this good work of preparing youth to be productive citizens in our country, that's, that's the part that I enjoy the most. What are your goals for our district? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, of course, I mentioned earlier in our discussion that I report directly to the Board of Trustees. And so a lot of my goals are their goals as well. And so we have a document in our school district that's called a strategic plan. And that really is a, a nice, clear outline of all those goals. So I can tell them to you briefly. But one is that we want to do our work in the schools so that we're partners. So uh, the group that, that you guys represent, we want to do whatever we can through our work to support you. We think that what you're doing is valuable, that it can reach out and, and help other young people. And so if we can help support that, then we're being your partners in the community. We think that it takes more than just the schools to educate students. And so by having other community partners help us, then um, we're working together really to, to make that outcome happen. So that's one goal. Second goal is that we want to do what we can to help your moms and dads. We want our parents of our students to feel like they're partners with the school district because we, we can't do it alone and we know that your parents can't do it alone. So we help offer some of the different opportunities and experiences that you get at school. And uh, when you go home, your moms and dads will say, hey, do you have any homework? And so they're our partners by helping you uh, do your schoolwork so that you can be successful. So that's two goals. Our third goal is we're really interested in student wellness or well-being. And that covers a lot of ground. We want you to be safe physically while you're at school. Um, you guys know that we've built some fences, some gates. We've also built a single point of entry at the school. We want to try to keep you safe while you're at school. So that's just one little aspect. We have also built a uh, school-based health center. So students that might not have access to health care can actually come to a school-based health care center and get services. Um, we're interested in the kinds of food you eat. We want to make sure that you're healthy, that you have exercise, and you have, have access to health care. So that's goal number three. Goal number four is that we want to make sure that the things that you study in school, the curriculum, 
really will benefit you. We don't want to just have you learning things that really don't matter. We know that you have greater goals and aspirations. We know that you're going to go on to uh, some sort of training after high school. You're going to need that for your career, for your jobs. We know that you might have interest in going to the university. We need to provide you with the detail and the information that colleges recognize and accept. And so that's important. So that's goal number four, having a, a curriculum that matters and that's relevant. You don't want to learn stuff that you're never going to need or use or want. Trigonometry. Like trigonometry? Yeah. <laughs> I can't even pronounce the word. <laughs> Those are mental gymnastics, I think. So, so even some of that helps you learn how to think, how to solve problems, how to think through, and, and maybe even how to go about finding information to help you solve that problem. So there's some value, even if it doesn't quite seem like it gets the, the high thing on your list. Okay, so that's goal number four. And then our, our fifth goal is, in order to provide that information, we have to have a lot of people to help provide that. So we want to attract and retain people that we know are, are good people and that have that content to help you learn. And so we rely on a, a broad um, variety of people to be able to do that. And we feel like we have some really outstanding teachers and principals and um, teachers' aides and uh, all of those folks that are at our sites to help you. So those are our five goals. And uh, we believe that we're making good strides on meeting those goals and remember that those are part of our strategic plan and if people that might be watching this want to learn more about that strategic plan they can go to our webpage which is www.carsoncityschools.com they can actually find a copy and that way they can see and read and join in help us however you can because there's lots of opportunities for volunteer um, volunteering on committees or projects that are helping us to meet those goals that i've mentioned Mr. Stokes, thank you for your time and support. We appreciate your time. It's been my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. This has been fun. I hope that uh, you'll come back and we can have another chat. I would love to. Well, thank you for watching all the Christmas videos. See you next week.